Good morning. Thank you for joining me on my Facebook Live this morning. It's a very wet morning here this morning, although it is still really close. So uh, I'm actually going to open some windows. Hopefully it won't be too noisy. So if you're joining me live, thank you so much. I appreciate you um, taking the time out of your day. And um, if you're watching me on catch up, thank you too. So um, I'm using our stamp set of the week, Prized Peony this week. Hi Jeanette, hi Ruth. And um, so I'm doing something different with it each day. So Monday's session was this one here, using the mainly the background papers. So on this one, I just coloured in a small amount of the background papers with the blends pen in petal pink. And on this one, I left the background exactly as it is, stamped the flower on a die cut and left it all as a monochrome set of colours. Yesterday, I did some opposite colouring. So we coloured the background of this paper, leaving the flowers standing out. And I did um, a different colour yesterday can't even remember what colour it was um, but that one's been posted already so I do apologise I'll have to look back through I'm looking at the colours in front of me oh yes it was um, Highland Heather that was it I needed to do a birthday card to go so I used Highland Heather in the background and then these little tags are from the Pika Hoot Suite um, and the die cut cuts these all out in one go so I've just layered those up and added some matching ribbon. So that inspiration came from the annual catalogue that the stamp set is featured in. And next to it was another sample. Hi Carol with an E, hi Lynn, Marion, Moretta, Molly, good morning. Yes, I think everybody's got rather wet this morning. So let me just show you the inspiration for today. I'm hoping you can see this okay. So this is the page with the bundle on. So if you have got a catalogue to hand and you want to look it up, it's page 84. And this was the one effectively that we recreated yesterday. And then today I'm going to do a version of this one using the die cut. So we're going to stamp the peony flowers we're going to use watercolour today, so we're going to use ink refills to fill them in and then die cut and layer them up. So I'm going to layer it slightly differently, but the effect hopefully will be similar. So let me show you. Roughly what it's going to look like. Hi Jacqueline. So. Here's one I had a go with yesterday. So I've got um, a blue background here. I've layered some vellum on top and then I've got one of our rectangle stitched label dies on top of that. And then I've watercolored over the back, which I'll show you how to do. So we're going to do that using our new water pens. And on this particular one, I also ran it through our embossing folder, one of the new ones that does those little dots. So I might do one without to see what the difference is today. And because I've done that, I actually stamped the sentiment separately and added it on the top. I've used just some basic watercolour to do the flowers and the leaves, and those have been die cut and layered up. So hopefully, fairly straightforward. So I am going to be using our Shimmer White card. Now you probably can't see this in the light and I have got my house lights on as well, although I am in my window. Um, but it has a shimmer to it and it's very good for water colouring because it will absorb the water. 
You could also use watercolour paper if you had that. So you could, you know, whichever you prefer. And because we're watercolouring, we're going to be using stays on. I'm sorry, this has got a very old label on top of it, but it's called stays on. And this is a permanent ink. That means that you can add water to it and it won't uh, bleed or anything. You can also use it on non-porous surfaces. So you could stamp on coasters, for example, with this. You could stamp on glass with it. Okay, so it, as it says, for every surface. So we sell this. It's not a, um, a stamping up only product. It's available in the uh, outside world um, but we do hold this in our catalogue so the first thing I'm going to do is just um, actually I'm going to do the background I think because I want that to dry so for my card today I've decided to go with So Saffron as my base card I've got my layer of vellum and I've got my die cut here and then going to stamp onto some matching shimmer white card for my flowers so let us do the background first because I want that to dry so one thing you do have to do when you're water coloring is either have a heat gun to hand if you want to do it in a hurry or allow time to dry so it's not like blends pens when you're coloring in or if you're doing a background it's instantly dry so just bear that in mind. However, it can be a really quick way to colour in, especially if you're like me and do the scribble colouring. <laughs> OK, so let's do the background first. So I'm going to use the, the stitch label. I'm just going to pop some grid paper behind. I'm just going to put that to one side so people can see what I'm doing. Oh dear, I think everybody's soggy. Hi Abby. Hi Verity. Is there anybody that hasn't got rain this morning? <laughs> I think you could be quite unique if that was the case. Okay, so in our catalogue now we have a set of three water painters. They come in this handy little um, pocket. You get a wide tip, a medium tip and a narrow tip. I'm using the wide and the medium today and it's just like using a paintbrush and um, a pot of water except the water is held in the barrel so there's no chance of knocking the whole bottle of, uh, bottle of water over so this is the broad tip as you can see here and I will show you the medium tip so hopefully you can see those okay. Now I've already filled this up. I filled this with tap water. Um, what I would recommend you do if you're not using your pens for a little while when you've finished with them is empty the tap water out um, and leave the barrels slightly open so that they have a chance to dry out. Um, here where we are it's quite a hard water area and if you leave the water in it can... Um, mess up the innards of the um, the barrels here with a bit of lime scale so I definitely recommend you empty them out and what I do is I empty them out leave them open and then just pop them back in just with the tops on nice and loose okay let me put this top on out of the way okay so here is my broad tip and one thing I do recommend you have with you is um, either a kitchen towel. I prefer to use a cloth rather than a kitchen towel because uh, A, it lasts longer and uh, B, it's more, you know, you don't need lots and lots of rolls of it. And so what you can do is make sure when you start, if you just squeeze the barrel, it does say push. Not sure that you can see that. But if you squeeze the barrel, you can um, entice the water out you can see that hopefully on there because what you want is a fairly um, wet barrel to start with my background color I'm going to do so saffron and I'm going to use 
our refills today. You, if you don't have refills, you could use your ink. Hi Claire. So what you could do is open your ink pad and then just tap it onto your block. But I, for when I'm watercolour in a large area, I do like to use the refill because it's it's more liquid to start with. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops and obviously this is very concentrated ink. I've got my um, water painter here and what I'm going to do is add some more water. I've got a bit of blue on there I can see it. <laughs> okay so that I've got a nice wet wash. Okay, you want it fairly wet. You can wet the paper first if you want to. It's entirely up to you. And I'm just going to go over like this. Okay. Now I do like to leave some around the edges to make it look like you've water paint water water coloured it. Um, otherwise you might as well have just cut your die cut in so saffron although obviously with watercolours it's slightly lighter anyway okay just gonna wipe that off and I'm just gonna make sure that I clean this out now while I remember so just squeezing it and it's amazing how long that ink will go for now this has got a very slight green tint to it because there was a tiny little bit of blue left from my activities yesterday. Okay, to get this one back into its um, holder, what I do is just squeeze the tip together like so. Obviously this cap is narrower than the, the brush when it's at its broadest point. Okay, so there's my background. What I'm going to do while that's drying, and it won't take very long, I didn't wet it um, hugely, is I'm going to stamp the flowers ready for watercolouring. So this is a spare piece of shimmer white and I'm using our stays on. Morning Brenda, morning Jo. So has anybody got sunshine out there? <laughs> I really hope so. Hope somebody must have it. Okay, so this is the medium peony, and I will show you the stamp set for anybody who didn't join us yesterday. And because these are going to be die cut, I'm actually moving off that because there's a little ridge there. I don't know why I've decided to work on this surface. Hey ho. So you can see the detail of the die, of the stamp, I beg your pardon. I can't believe it's Wednesday already. I really don't know where this time is going. So there we go. We've got two of those. And then in the stamp set, there's a, a number of leaves. There's two leaves, so I'm just going to stamp those. And there are matching dies, and the leaves go slightly different ways. So I'm just going to use this little bit here. Not quite sure why I put these so far apart. And what I like about these leaves, this one in particular, is it hasn't got a little base. So if you love doing Ruth's stamped one sheet wonder where you want to add leaves with no um, little bases, so it looks like they're tucked behind the flowers, then these leaves would be perfect. That's if Ruth's still with us. Hi Lynn. So if you don't follow Ruth, you really should be. And she's an artful stamping. Okay, so I've got an assortment of leaves basically. Okay, so that's my stamping for the moment. Now you will see how quickly this piece of 
card has flattened back down and that's because the paper has absorbed the water and it's flattening back down. If you use standard Whisper White or other sort of non um, very porous card then you'll find it will warp. So this is where watercolour or our shimmer white which has got a little shimmer to it which I appreciate today's light you're not going to see. Okay so there's my stamped images. I'm looking for the stamp set to show you. So this is for anybody who didn't join me yesterday or the day before. So this is the image I'm using. It also has this large peony here with a little bud. A small one. It has four really nice stylish sentiments and then these two leaves. And then this little block here, which you may not be able to see, is like a very faded background. Now I have actually used it on this one. Um, but because of the embossing, I don't think you can see it. So what I might do is stamp it on here with the ink so that you can see the effect. It's another one, really good one if you're doing one sheet wonders like Ruth because that's a perfect little faded background. Also useful if you've got a little spot somewhere you want to cover up, you could use that. Okie dokie. So, in the die set, which I'm going to use more extensively tomorrow evening, we have the die for the flower and the two leaves. So basically all I'm going to do is line this up and it is fairly easy to line up because you've got like a soft edge here and then a pronounced edge at the bottom around these leaves. So you're just going to place it on there. And you've got two leaves and one goes one way and one has a bend the other way. So they're quite easy to distinguish. So what I would do is then put that through our new die cutting machine. I would then have to reposition it, obviously, because I've got two flowers and multiple sets of leaves. Okay, now I'm not going to do that because that's um, pretty boring to watch. So here's some Blue Peter style that I made earlier. Now I would recommend, if you're doing a lot of these, it's easier to colour in when it's on the sheet like this. So I would recommend if you're doing a lot or even one, do your water colouring here and then cut it out. OK, only because it's easier to do that than have pieces sort of moving around. OK, but I am going to do it this way because this was quicker in terms of not you not having to watch me die cut everything. So let's move this out of the way and do some water colouring. So I'm going to use my narrower water painter and this one is going to be so saffron and I think I'm going to do a little bit of maybe pumpkin pie in the middle. Hi Janice, thanks for joining us. So I'm just using a block to put my ink onto again. So this is my so saffron So just literally, this is, I haven't got much, oh yes, it hasn't got much left in it. I think that's my original so saffron. This is my pumpkin pie, just for the middles. And then this is the um, pear pizzazz that I'm going to use for the leaves. Okay. You can always tell when it's a full bottle because you get a complete piece as opposed to things with bubbles. Okay, so for water colouring, exactly the same as we did with the area. So I'm going to bring my water down my barrel by using the, where it says here, push. 
and I'm going to add a little bit to my sew saffron here. Okay. Now, the more water you add, the weaker the solution will be. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit more so you can see that. And you want enough to be able to play with. You don't want the tiniest bit there. And there's lots of different techniques for water colouring. Some of them, um, they recommend you wet this area first and then you can drop in the colour. So I'll try and do two um, different types and you can do whichever you prefer. So, what I'm going to do is just go straight the way over and then go back and add some detail. Now, you've got two choices. I don't know if you can see on this one I've gone right the way over the edge and on this one as it stands I've left the edges white it's entirely up to you I quite like to go right the way over the edges if you don't want it to sort of stand out in the same way so if you were doing this here make sure that you cover the whole area plus a little bit so that when you die cut it you're um, die cutting the area with the outside edge does that make sense really depends on what it's going on if it's going on a white background then you could leave the outside edge completely white so I'm just going to do this one the same And then I'm going to add some detail in. Okay, so I'm going right the way over. And it's almost just like using the light blends pen, but obviously much quicker because it's just going literally straight onto the paper. So you can be quite fast, quite slapdash about it. You know me. Okay. Let's add a little bit of our pumpkin pie. So I'm going to do this in the centre to start with, like so. That, okay. If you feel it's too dark, what you can do while it's still wet is take your cloth and um, dab it to lift out some of the colour. If it's too light, you can go back in, obviously, and add more detail, like so. Now, what I want to do is add a little bit more detail in here, so it becomes a bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is actually blend a little bit of the pumpkin pie in with the so saffron. Just going to add a little bit more so saffron. There we go. And I can try it on my paper here. So see, I've got a darker, a darker version. And if you want, you could use the finer tip to go around and do this detail. But what I'm doing is, like we did with the blends pens, is use the detail Stamping Up illustrators have provided and go over the darker areas with this sort of mid-tone. just basically giving it a little bit more interest now I know there's some great watercolor artists out there some great stamping up demonstrators that do this much better than I do so do take time to search them out okay so you can see the difference between this one 
and this one even only just with a little bit of um, addition of colour I'm going to do the same with this so you can do this fairly swiftly you can also leave areas of white as well if you wish to give it some added texture Blend that out a little bit, like so. And just this small amount of ink will last for quite a few sets, so it's quite useful to be able to stamp a whole load and colour those in. You know, if you're doing something for one card you might as well do two or three that's a good way of building up your card supplies okay so there's my two um, watercolored flowers peonies just going to do some of the leaves as well move this one out of the way so here I've got, oh I've got some pear pizzazz on there as well. So let me see if I can show you a different way to colour these. So you can wet them first. I know it's quite difficult for you to see that. <laughs> and then pick up the ink that I've got on my finger. and then just drop it in I'm actually going to go right the way over again so I'm not doing any particular colouring on the leaves let's see if I can do a better job of one of those this is where having it still on the um, sheet is better. So there I've got a bit of ink and then you can drop that in. Can you see how that's sort of blending in? Right, just going to whiz over these. I don't think I need this many. I had one, two, three, four, five in the last do this one okay there we are that will do for my purpose okay so the main thing is to make sure you clean your brush out afterwards and then empty the barrel when you've completely finished. I do like that they come in a little pack and keep them together. Right, let's just wipe this off. So there are my flowers and my leaves. I'm just going to put those to one side for a second. And we hop back to my layer here. And what I'm going to do, I think, is just going to stamp that little texture over it. Okay, and I'm not going to emboss this one. Maybe, maybe not. So I'm just going to use So Saffron ink. Here is my so saffron like that. I'm just going to bring in a sheet because I want to see the oh, saucy 
stuck together. That one. You grab another. Well, it's still raining here. We'll get wet later. <laughs> Tuck these out of the way. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, that's nice and pale. That's what I wanted. So I'm just going to drop this in. So you can see it's very pale. Almost, you almost can't see it. But it just gives a nice additional texture. Okay, so on this one here, I added my sentiments separately. Um, I could stamp mine straight on for this one, just to have a different effect. So I think I'm going to do that. Now I know that this is dry. Um, I am actually going to use, what am I going to use? Grey, I think. So I've just put away. If it was still wet, I would use, or if there was any chance of it still being wet, I'd use stays on. So I'm going to use a basic grey. And the thanks message is from Good Morning Magnolia. I would use the sentiments from here, but I need to do a stack of thank you cards. So if you forgive me, I'm just um, switching over to the thank you. Or thanks in this case. So I'm going to put this top right hand side and then if I mess it up, I've got my finger underneath it, I can put a die cut on top. There we go. Looks slightly wonky doesn't it? Does that look wonky to you? We'll see. Okay. Oh, right. Marion's got dark clouds. Hi, Sam. So let's put this together. So I say I've done this one without the um, embossing. I do quite like the embossing because I like that folder. But you know, we have to do different things, don't we? So this is my so sad on card base which I haven't scored, but I'm just going to fold and add that like so. And then I'm going to put a layer of vellum on before my other layer goes on top of that. Okay, And I'm going to tear the vellum so Carol at this point is going to have a little meltdown. That's Carol W because she doesn't like tearing. <laughs> so what I do is I start with a piece just slightly larger than my piece I want to cover. And then just start at the top. Now you'll find um, that vellum will tear in a different way depending on the grain of the vellum. So some sides will come really easy. So this one is, is tearing really nicely. Okay, so there's that one. Then I'm going to do this one. And you want to allow enough space for your fingers to hold it. You don't want to be trying to tear a tiny piece like this because this is where it gets buckled up. So give yourself space. And what I do for vellum is hold it with my hand on the left hand side and then tear towards me. And I'm not worrying how um, the size of it because I know that if I do roughly this amount all the way around, it should work. 
Okay, so supporting it with my left hand side. Now when you're tearing paper, it's slightly different. So we challenged, Lynn and I challenged Carol to do some tearing this week. So I wonder if she has. <laughs> okay, so that layer is going to go onto there. And then that is going to go on top. And you could do this whole thing at a jaunty angle if you wanted. Like so. Or like so. Whichever way round you wanted to do it. I'm going to put this straight on. Mm. What do we think? See, my gut feel is straight. What do you think? Should I do the vellum as a jaunty angle? I wonder. I think I'm going to be boring and keep it straight. Okay, so all I'm going to do is use my seal to put the vellum on and just a bit in the middle like so because that's going to be covered up straight oh good I suddenly thought when I was going to look back that everybody was going to say jaunty jaunty okay like so and then this one will go on top like that and I'm going to add a little bit more seal to this one so I've got three strips across there roughly in the centre of that vellum panel okay now I've got my flowers here so I can do these at an angle and what I quite like is for these to come over the edge rather than try and fit them inside I mean that would still work but I do quite like it makes it look more natural somehow with it coming over the edge so I'm going to add these with dimensionals and then I'm going to add the leaves oh, look what I've just done <laughs> with some um, I might be able to take that out with some water. So that was ink on my um, finger. So I'm going to add the leaves with some glue. So pop these over. That will teach me to leave that sample there, won't it? So I'm just going to put two on each one so that I've got space to tuck the leaves in underneath and if you put too many dimensionals on you can't get underneath <laughs> yes I should go jaunty shouldn't I Maretta I do sometimes go jaunty <laughs> so I'm just rolling this slightly to get a slightly curved effect and let's have one here and one up here like so and then I'm going to tuck these leaves in just adding a little bit of wet glue top and bottom so just a tiny little bit here 
and I do it top and bottom so that if it touches the top it will stick to it and if it's flat on the bottom equally it will stick to it because I've got the dimensionals in the middle so I'm going to pop one in there and by using the glue you've got the option to sort of move it around Do the same with this one Have one in there. Have one in the corner. Like so. And I think I want another one down here because there's quite a bit of corner showing, isn't there? So just going to add a bit there, there we go, and then not sure, I'll, oh I could put one at the top, tucking it quite a long way in, it's not quite right is it? there we have it okay here's my one with the ink on and what I'm going to try and do is see if my ink remover will get that out the only problem is it was um, ink refill so it's very strong oh yes there's a few crown hills around on there um, right, let me find my ink remover. Let me see if I can find it. I know it's in a little tin. There it is. So this is called a mono sand eraser. It's a useful little tool for removing ink. Um, now it may or may not work on this. So I've got the vellum layer, which I can actually, I could, if I'm careful, trim that down. Worst case, I would trim the card down. But let us just see so the sand eraser is exactly that it's a really hard quite a harsh rubber and I know you can't see much of what's going on but basically you just want to use it very lightly where your ink is And you're basically taking off the top layer of card. That's the best way I can describe it. So this isn't available from Stamping Up. I did have um, a stash of them that I sold to my ladies. I, I'll have a look and see if I've got any left. But if not, you can find them at a good stationery shop. Or um, an online store such as... Amazon so that is coming out slightly so it's called mono sand eraser and it's for ink it's made by Tombow the same people that make our glue so 
nearly gone. And what I'm thinking, I'm going to try and get this tear this vellum. You know, I said don't try and tear a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't want to tear, it's too thin, uh, it's too thick. Okay. Let's see. That's got rid of some of it. Let's see if it gets rid of it on the vellum. I'm not sure it will. So sorry, this is my um see if I can repair the damage. It's a bit like the repair shop, isn't it? <laughs> On a somewhat smaller scale. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we're going to get any more of that out. See, that's nearly gone. What I'm going to try and do is I will try and go higher and bring some of that vellum out and then trim the edge. Another leaf? Oh! That's a good idea. Yes, I'm liking that. Well done, Carol. Yes. That's one that goes that way, isn't it? Well done, Carol. get away with that I'm going to make this I've got slightly different leaves here haven't I so what I will do is color this leaf theme the same let me see if I can do that well done Cal why didn't I think of that thank you all Right, so that's quite pale. Add a little bit more. Coming plan. What should we get ink again? Yours. Well done. Thank you, Carol. You're a star. Yeah, well saved, Carol. Okay. Right, make sure there's no other ink. I should have known, shouldn't I, when I had ink on my fingers. But yes, that will pop in there nicely. So, there we have <laughs> two prized peony cards. So, I do like this with the embossing, I have to say, but I wanted to try one without. Now, this is peeling away a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit more seal just in there. For the vellum so it sits down nicely because obviously this has got quite a weight on it now there we go and on the inside i could stamp the little flower to finish that off and obviously stamp it on the envelope so there we go thank you so much for joining me thank you for saving me carol so i will stick that down in a second just position it exactly right there we go so thanks for joining me today I appreciate your company it is now goodness me oh 10 to 11 where did that time go so thank you so much I will be back on tomorrow evening so 7 p.m. on a Thursday if you're watching live obviously catch up you can watch as and when you would like and we'll be doing something else with the prize peony but we'll be using the 
the die sets to make a 3D peony flower. So something completely different for tomorrow evening. So I hope you can join me. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope it, the weather improves for everybody that's watching here live from the UK. <laughs> and um, I look forward to catching up with you very soon. Please take care, look after yourselves, look after your loved ones, and I hope you can keep crafting. Thank you. Bye, everybody.